Vegas, where one of the world's largest tech gatherings is currently underway. It's the annual Consumer Electronics Show. Now, this is the event that previews many of the latest technologies that will soon be appearing on shelves and in online stores. Mark New is at the show and he's joining us live from Las Vegas. Mark, what's going on there? Michelle, technology companies, analysts, and journalists have all gathered here at the Las Vegas Convention Center to get a peek at the very latest technology. All week long, we'll be checking in with some of the biggest names in the business, including Sony, Samsung, and Lenovo. But we'll also be taking a look at some of the smaller companies who are using CES as a launching pad to try and create some buzz and create a share of the marketplace. 3,300 companies are showing off their latest innovations to a tech-filled audience of more than 150,000 people. It's estimated that attending companies will unveil 20,000 brand new technology products. This is the world's cup of innovation. Whether it's in a car or home or on the go, it's all here, one place, one time a year. Today, we lift the veil on our advanced active safety research vehicle, offering a peek inside our automated safety vehicle research. Lexus gave the public a first look at its self-driving vehicle, which remains under research. Equipped with high-definition color cameras, forward and side-facing radar, and laser tracking, Lexus says its vision isn't necessarily a car that drives itself, but rather a car equipped with an always attentive co-pilot. For the home, moving beyond ordinary 3D was the name of the game. LG showed off its 84-inch Ultra HD Smart 3D TV. But Stream TV networks from Philadelphia went one step further, unveiling its Ultra D technology that allows viewers to watch in 3D, glasses free. The first TV panels incorporating Ultra D will come later this year from Hisense, China's leading TV manufacturer. Chinese computer maker Lenovo showed why it continues to beat the competition despite the struggles of the PC market. Go! Lenovo unveiled for the first time ever the 27-inch Idea Center Horizon Table PC. Here it's all done in one device. It goes from this mode, you push a button, it goes into a tabletop or a center console. So you could actually make it into a work environment or you can make it into a social environment. Or you can just do it as we're doing it today, mount it to an optional stand. More than 1,200 exhibitors are featuring some form of new wireless technology. And just as a smartphone ultimately keeps this robotic ball rolling, so too do many analysts feel that mobile is the true force driving CES 2013. And Ford Motor Company is one of the card maker, car makers that is moving quickly into mobile connectivity here with the product called Ford Sync. Joining me now is Ed Fleet, Director of Connected Services at Ford. Ed, thank you for joining us. Ford has offered some new things at CES. But first of all, I want to know, Ford Sync is about to hit China or is now hitting China right now. Tell us what can Chinese drivers expect that they haven't had before. That's great. Thank you for having me, Mark. You're right. Ford Sync is actually now available in China. We announced it earlier this year. It's actually in the marketplace on actually the world's best-selling nameplate, the Ford Focus. It's actually the best-selling uh, in, in, in China as well. So we've brought Sync technology to our vehicles already in China. And more recently, we actually announced at the Guangzhou Auto Show that we're bringing uh, all new feature called emergency assistance to our customers to leverage this technology. What we're seeing is uh, we're uh, more of a technology company and we're acting like that uh, versus just focusing on uh, the auto industry. What are some of, of the interesting things drivers can do with it? So with emergency assistance, it's a safety feature. And what it does is it allows uh, the vehicle to call emergency services in the event of an accident, even if in the unfortunate event the customer can't speak for themselves and tells the authorities where that person's located, potentially a life-saving feature. At CES, you just launched an app development program. I haven't heard that from a motor company. Tell us exactly what that is. I think it's another proof point where we're acting more like a, a mobile company, a mobile technology company. So basically with our app developer program, developers can actually develop mobile apps that are integrated in the vehicle. So customers today who want to use mobile applications in the vehicle now can do it in a safe way and keep their hands on the steering wheel and their eyes on the road. This is open source, right? Where somebody could actually develop Ford's. Does Ford have to give approval whether you can use Ford's sync system? 
Uh, so, so we do, but what we did was we announced a whole developer program so developers can go on their own to the website, create their application, integrate in the vehicle, and then if they decide they want to distribute it, then we work with them to actually um, ensure that it, it meets our testing and our uh, validation requirements. Is there a concern that things have become so busy? I mean, it's supposed to simplify mobile connection, right. and if people are developing all kinds of apps, and even maybe without the, your approval, right. that people could be doing things that actually distract drivers from the road and they could take their eyes off of it, getting right. all excited by the various apps. Is that a danger? Well, that's a great question. It absolutely is a danger. So what we see today is we see people using their phones and actually controlling these applications from the phone itself. And while you're driving down the road at 100 kilometers per hour, clearly that's not safe. So with technologies like Ford AppLink, it actually allows you to keep your phone in your pocket and still have that capability in the vehicle. And we really think that's a safe and smart solution to that problem. Okay. Um, with all this inter um, connectivity, um, there's been a lot of talk also about the next step, which would be driverless cars. Um, Lexus made a mention to it, Google has been big on it. Is Ford getting into driverless cars, and do you expect to see that in how many years? Uh, it's really hard to say, but we do see it coming. In fact, Ford has already launched services and features that allow you to have uh, cruise control features that allow the vehicle to monitor your distance between your vehicle and the next vehicle features where it uh, monitors lane departure warning and gives a, a warning sensor. So we're not to the point where uh, you can fall asleep in the back seat and uh, let the car drive for you, uh, but it's inching closer. So we keep an active eye on it and, uh, and we'll see where we go with it. How many years would you estimate? We uh, it's it's really impossible to predict. Uh, and you know, it's, it's the technology along with people's ability and willingness to have that type of control. So uh, we definitely see interesting strides and we'll keep uh, monitoring it closely. With the apps and the Sync, Ford Sync, is there a difference between the way Chinese drivers will be using it or are using it as opposed to American drivers? Sure, so probably the biggest difference at first is we're going to be using it in Mandarin. Uh, so our customers in China can use Sync and these apps uh, uh, in Mandarin versus typically English uh, here in, in, in the U.S. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I think the key difference is what applications they're going to be using. Uh, so we have the ability to have unique applications for that market, whether it's a market like China or, or really anywhere else in the world. So those will be some of the key differences. Thank you very much for joining us at Fleet of Ford. Now back to you in the studio, Michelle.